All right, so today we're going to talk about metric spaces, which are going to be really important in this real analysis series because they're going to provide us with a tool to generalize some of the earlier results about sequences and also continuity. So before we go any further, we need to obviously talk about what a metric space is. And a metric space, and the notation that we'll use for a metric space is like, this is going to be some set x with some distance function or metric function d that satisfied these properties right here. So whenever we mention a metric space, we need to give a set that the metric is going to be defined on and then a metric itself. And this metric is supposed to provide some notion of distance between points. And the best way that we can <coughs> characterize this is by adopting the following axioms. So we say that if the distance and the input of this distance function or metric is going to be of two variables, where each of the variable is an element of the set, uh, we're going to say that the distance from some point x to another point y is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y. So that means that the only way that this distance function can be zero is if the other input is just the same. So if you have the distance from x to x, some point x, to that same point x, then by these axioms, the distance should be zero. And we also have this property number two, which is called the symmetry property. And it states that the distance from x to y is the same exact thing as the distance from y to x. Axiom is often called the triangle inequality and it states that if we go from some point x, so if we denote this point as x, and this point z, then if we go from x to z through some intermediate point, so let's say that we have this point y, then the distance from x to z should be less than the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z. And I drew it in kind of a suggestive way because in the plane, if we adopt the Euclidean metric, which is what we just denote as the regular distance function, so like <coughs> the distance x0 minus x1 squared plus y0 minus y1 squared, that distance function, if we take the distance from x to z, that's going to be smaller than the sum of these two, <clears throat> which is why it's called the triangle inequality. Now, you may be thinking, this is supposed to be a distance, so how come the distance isn't always greater than zero? And a lot of books actually adopt this as an axiom, but we can also prove this using these axioms up here. So to confirm our intuition about uh, these axioms really defining some sort of distance function, then we should go ahead and prove this. So in any metric space xd, the distance function for any two points, x and y, is greater than or equal to zero for all x and y in x. So to prove that, we're going to consider the distance between x to x. And that may not seem so useful, but if we use the triangle inequality, so if we use number three, then that must be less than or equal to the distance from x to y, plus the distance from y to x. And here you might see where this is going, 
because the distance from y to x is just the same exact thing as the distance from x to y. So we can use property 2 here. So we get that this distance from x to x is less than or equal to 2 times the distance from x to y. But this distance from x to x by this property up here, by property number 1, is just 0. And we can certainly divide by 2, and we get that the distance from x to y is always greater than or equal to 0. So we can actually see that these axioms really do provide some sort of notion of distance. So now, since we're convinced that these uh, axioms actually do provide us with some sort of notion of distance, uh, we should just note a few examples of <coughs> common metrics that we could assume. So the <coughs> Euclidean metric on R, so on the real number line, is just the difference between two points. So if I take some point x and some point y, we would say that the Euclidean metric is just <clears throat> the absolute value of x minus y. Now we should actually, to get uh, more familiar with the axioms that we noted, we do verify the axioms. So is the distance from x to y the same thing as the distance from y to x? And that is true, since we're taking the absolute value. So 2 holds. <clears throat> and then for our first property, would the distance uh, between x and y be equal to 0 if and only if they were equal to each other? Well, the only way that we can make the absolute value equal to 0 would be if x was equal to y. So the first property also holds. <clears throat> and then for the third and final property, if we were to introduce some other point z right here, we would see that the distance from x to z is the same as if it was x to y and y to z, but equality is allowed. But let's say if we were to put our z here, so let's say it's not here, but instead here, if we went from x to y and then y back to z, that would certainly be bigger than x to z. So we can see that this third property also holds. Now, another metric that we could use would be the discrete metric. And unlike the last one, where our set was the real numbers, the discrete metric can actually be adopted for any set. So, <coughs> any set can have a metric put on it. Now, this isn't a very interesting metric. It just says that the distance between x and y is zero if they're the same point. So that second property, wait, my bad, first property of them being zero if and only if x is equal to y is true, and then it's going to be one otherwise. <clears throat> and then you can easily check that those other two properties holds as well. And then for our last example, we could consider the integral of the absolute value of two functions f and g <clears throat> and integrating that difference. So visually if we were wanting to represent this point A and our point B that we were integrating along then if we had some function f that looked like this and some function g that looked like this 
then the distance is going to be the area between these two curves. <clears throat> and since we're taking the absolute value, that's clearly going to be positive. And then we can also check the other two axioms as well. So I hope this video helped you out on understanding metric spaces. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See you in the next video.